Hey folks, uh, this is uh, for Integrated Math 3, Module 1.1, Proving Lines Are Parallel. We actually did a, this exact lesson in Integrated Math 2, so I'm going to go kind of fast um, uh, through this lesson because um, uh, we've seen it before. You might have forgotten some of it, but I'll, I'll remind you here. So don't forget all your lessons can be found at MrMathBlog.com and then make sure you click Integrated Math 3. So Proving Lines Are Parallel. Okay. So how can we prove that two lines are parallel? Okay, so the converse of an if-then statement, if P then Q, is formed by switching the P and the Q. So it becomes if Q then P. So for example, I use this one all the time because I do live in Sacramento. If I live in Sacramento, then I live in California. The converse would be switch them around. If I live in California, then I live in Sacramento. Okay, we'll deal with the converse in just a second, you guys. We'll come back to that. Okay, so hold on for about two minutes here. So if, if these lines are parallel, lines L and M are parallel, answer each. Okay, so six and blank are supplementary. Here's six. SS means same-sided interior angle. So which one is on the same side as this one right here? Six and three, and they're inside these, inside these two parallel lines. That's why they're called interior. So six and three are said to be supplementary because they're same-sided interior angles. Remember, the lines are parallel. Now, if the lines are parallel, then same-sided interior angles are supplementary. Same with four and five. Those guys are supplementary, okay? All right, so four and blank are alternate interior angles, okay? Interior means um, they're inside the parallel lines and they alternate on the transversal. So four and six, do you guys remember that from IM2, Integrated Math 2? Four and six are equal to each other, congruent to each other, because they're alternate interior angles. Three and blank are corresponding angles. Okay, corresponding angles are uh, one slides down right on top of another. If I slid this line straight down on top of this one, three would slide right down on here. So three and seven are called corresponding angles. So are two and six. So are four and eight and one and five. Okay corresponding angles of so three and seven okay eight and blank are alternate exterior okay so they're outside and they alternate on the transversal so eight and two one's on one side two's on the alternate side okay so eight and two seven and blank are vertical angles okay seven and five are vertical angles they're congruent no matter what the lines don't have to be parallel for vertical angles to be congruent oops I didn't mean to do that let's see if I can get rid of that one so seven and five okay four and blank are supplementary because they're a linear pair okay so four and either three or four and one because four and one makes up this line hence linear line and linear linear pair so four and one make up this line four and three make up this line i don't know what i did if i did both of them or so one or three yeah okay Okay, so the converse of our theorems, our postulates in the last lesson, are also true. So if two lines are cut by a transversal, and if all that magic happens, then the lines are parallel. So if same-sided interior angles are supplementary, corresponding angles are equal, alternate interior angles are equal, then lines are parallel, alternate exterior angles are equal, then lines are parallel. Okay, so if these same-sided interior angles added up to 180 and or, or, or if these added up to 180, then I can say these lines are parallel by the same-sided interior angles theorem, okay, or the, cor or the converse of them. Alternate interior angles are congruent, so if 4 is congruent to 6 or 3 is congruent to 5, then the lines are parallel, okay? So that's what that's saying, okay? And then alternate exterior angles, so if 1 and 7 are congruent or 8 and 2 are congruent, then the lines are parallel. Let's slide that up, okay? And then if corresponding angles are congruent, okay? There's two and six. Remember, corresponding angles are which one slides down on top of the other one. Three would slide down to seven. So if three is congruent to seven, if one's congruent to five, if four is congruent to eight. Do you remember that from I am two? Okay, then the lines are parallel. Okay, these are all called uh, converses of. So same sided interior angles are supplementary is the converse of the SSI angles postulate. Alternate interior angles are congruent. This is the converse of 
alternate interior angles uh, theorem, the converse of alternate exterior angles theorem, the converse of corresponding angles theorem, okay? All right, now if you're in my class, I do not require you to write down the purple stuff, just in case, okay? So parallel uh, postulate, well oh, goody, we get to do a, a construction here. I like doing construction. So through a point that's not on a line, here's a point that's not on this line right here. Through a point that's not on the line, there's exactly one line that goes through that point that's parallel to this line right here. One and only one line is called the parallel postulate. So here we're going to use a straight edge and a compass to construct line M through point P that's not on L. So the M is parallel to L. Okay, so I'm going to construct a line M that goes through P. So this will be line M right here going through P with the straight edge and compass it's going to be parallel okay so first thing we got to do is pick a point Q on line L and use your straight edge and draw a line through Q and P so I'll put Q like right here and then we'll do a straight edge right through there okay so you can pick your straight edge up and do that and then we're going to use our compass to copy angle Q on point P okay so let me grab this compass right here whoops let me move this up over here okay now my uh, my next clicks will be a little bit away so we're gonna copy this angle here let me let me bring this in just a little bit right here okay so to copy an angle we're gonna put the pointy right here and we're gonna arc through both sides of uh, whoops let's see through both sides of this angle so I'm gonna go ahead and strike an arc now whatever that compass opening is I'm gonna slide it up don't change the compass opening and I'm gonna do the same arc movement right down through here okay make it as big as that one right there okay so you can see I did that right there whoops let me back up here okay so now what we're gonna do is we're going to uh, adjust this we're gonna put pointy right here and we're gonna put pencil-y uh, so it closes up uh, right here. Oops, my wife is calling. Uh, I have to call her right back. Okay, so we're going to have to close that up and put that right here and strike that. And then we're going to slide it right up here and do the same thing and strike it right there. Okay, and then what that's going to do is uh, now we connect this guy to this guy right here okay so there's that and we connect it and there those guys are parallel because we just created um, corresponding congruent angles right there so we created a parallel line right there by corresponding angles okay let me get rid of this now so that's the only time we're going to do this construction so uh, use the given angle relationship to decide whether the lines are parallel and explain okay so 3 is congruent to 5 okay 3 is congruent to 5 yes those are called alternate interior angles so by alternate interior angles theorem those lines are parallel five and six are supplementary five and six make a linear pair they're supplementary no matter what so no okay so they're a linear pair they're always supplementary I need like five and four four to be supplementary or six and three to be supplementary see here this says four and five if four and five are supplementary then yes those are called same sided interior angles all right so it says four is equal to x plus twenty and eight is equal to two x plus five and x equals fifteen well let's plug in fifteen and see if we get the same values if they are the same values then yes okay so we get uh, 35 on both of them, and since they're equal, then yes, they're um, uh, by the corresponding angles theorem, those lines are parallel. All right, so uh, what must be true about the angles to make L parallel to M? And name the postulate. Okay, so 7 and 3. 7 and 3, they must be congruent because they're corresponding angles, okay? All right, 6 and 3. 6 and 3 must be supplementary because they're same-sided interior angles, okay? Suppose 4... Suppose 4 equals 3x plus 5 and 5 equals 5, uh, x plus 95 and x equals 20. So we're going to plug in 20 and we want to see if these are supplementary because they're same sided interior angles. So uh, we find out that one of them's um, uh, 65 and then one of them's 115 when we plug in 20. So 3 times 20 is 60, plus 5 is 65, and we get 20 plus 95 is 115. And since 65 and 115 add up to 180, then yes, by same-sided interior angles. Okay, okay. suppose 4 is 4x plus 12, and 7 
is uh, uh, 80 minus x, where x equals 15. Are they parallel? Okay, there's no fancy name to these, but if they're supplementary, then they are parallel. So plug in x equals 15, and um, uh, they're not supplementary, and they're not uh, congruent, so no, they're not even parallel by either one of them. All right, if you're in my class, I'm going to assign you that. Take care.